Comparatively speaking, podcasting has been one of the slower growing mediums for mass adoption. What we need is a big, bold PR push to spread the message of podcasting even wider. But would that work? Hello and welcome to another podcast pontifications with me, Evo Terra. Where are the got milk? But for podcasting, billboards. Where are the beef? It's what's for dinner. Uh, you know, those newspaper layouts, but again, for, for podcasting. Where's the podcasting equivalent of an animated dancing California grapes? I haven't seen any. I bet you haven't seen any because I'm pretty sure they don't exist. So why not? Well, I think there's a couple reasons why that's not the case or that they, that that, it, that they are not is actually the case. First, I think it's a real question of, well, now what? What's the call to action going to be on a giant, you should listen to podcasts ad? You know, on the ads for those various agricultural products, it's 100% branding. There's not really a call to action to go to a website or do anything like that for the most part. And that's because 100% of the people who are going to see that ad know where to find incredible edible eggs, to show my age, uh, in a grocery store somewhere. But according to what Edison Research has told us podcasters, only about half of the U.S. population has listened, and only 30% listen on a weekly basis, regularly have the habit so if someone saw a giant ad that said, go listen to podcasts, would the majority of people who were exposed to that ad know where and how to find them? And, and even if they did, would they have a decent experience when they got there? Sections of meat you can go buy, you can figure that kind of stuff out. We don't have eight cuts of steak. <laughs> and then there's the creative. What do you put in the ad? Pictures of people doing... What, listening? Do you play snippets from podcasts? And, and if that's the case, how in the heck do you select from the rich, huge range of podcasts that we have out there and portray that in a 30-second TV spot so that it appeals, whatever was said, appeals to the masses? I guess there's a bigger question, and that is, who's going to pay for this? You know, the associations that pay for those agricultural commercials, they're all made up of people who have two things in common. A shared product. We have a shared product in podcasting, but they have a shared economy. We don't have that in podcasting. And, and before you think that we do because of advertising, allow me to continue. You see, more people buying avocados, for example, isn't just good for the avocado industry. It's, it's required for the industry and for the people involved in the production of avocados to live. And if it's not, then they go bankrupt. Seriously. No one, and I, and I genuinely mean this, no one is in the avocado industry as a hobbyist. You might have an avocado tree in your backyard, as I did when I lived in Los Angeles, but I wasn't selling them. I wasn't in that industry. No one who was on the National Dairy Council or a member of the National Dairy Council keeps a milk cow as a pet or dabbles in single udder butter, which unfortunately is a real thing. No, everybody involved in these industries that are supported by these commercials that you and I have all seen, the people in these industries are fully committed, if not over leveraged, in those industries. There's no such thing as farm fading. That's bankruptcy. People can't suddenly switch from apples to walnut production. <laughs> Trees take time and land and massive amounts of capital to grow. And with very few exceptions, none of the people who are members of these councils or associations have day jobs really to fall back on. They're not dabbling in the space. 
it's it for them. That thing they do is what they do, and their lifeblood requires it. So therefore, they have to do these big programs from time to time to get people doing buying more of that particular product. That's just very different from our world of podcasting. Do we need more public education about podcasting so that we can break past that 30% number and get most people consuming content on par with other forms of media? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think we need to do that. I think it will be great for all of us. But it's going to be a very tough nut for us to crack. Pun sort of intended. Because we're not all in the same economic boat. We're not following the same economic path and we're not in it at the requirement that it must continue. If podcasting died tomorrow, sure, there would certainly be some livelihoods that were... I'd be screwed. What do I have to do? Get a job once again? But for most, most people in podcasting, they just go back to something else. We're wild. We're a disparate group. And it's very hard to build a movement around. But I don't think it's impossible. It's just hard. And the course is laid out from us for us by other industries like agriculture for some strange reason, doesn't actually work for us. But I'd love to hear what you think. So please jump into the Advancing Podcasting community at advancingpodcasting.xyz. I know, dumb URL, but what are you going to do? And let's keep the conversation going. And if this idea I brought to you sparked an idea, please go to buymeacoffee.com slash evoterra and show me your support. That's it. I shall be back tomorrow with yet another podcast pontifications. Cheers.